Touch a Truck is happening at Trustmark Park in Pearl this weekend. The Junior League of Jackson hosts the event. This is the fifth year. Today they welcome 2,000 kids from 19 schools for Field Trip Friday. As you can see, they got to explore all kinds of vehicles. All proceeds support the Junior League's more than 30 community projects in the metro. Organizers say they'll be open for general admission tomorrow, and that's rain or shine. Today is Field Trip Friday only, so we are not open to the public today. This is a special day focusing on the children um, that we have invited here today. Tomorrow is general admission from 10 to 4, rain or shine, so uh, the puddles will be free and the horns will be honking, so we will be here. Yeah. Also today, Secretary of State Delbert Hoseman, Miss Mississippi, and our very own Aaron Pickens read to students inside the reading tent. Disney on Ice is at the Mississippi Coliseum. Oh, that's a favorite in my house. The show features all of the big stars like Anna and Elsa there from Frozen and classic characters like the Seven Dwarves from Snow White. Crew members say there is something for everyone to enjoy. We have everybody's favorite Disney princesses, um, Snow White, Cinderella, as well as Rapunzel, Tiana, Ariel. We have a wonderful Little Mermaid segment that's really fun. We have um, a Russian acrobat team that comes out and does really amazing death-defying stunts. And in the second act, we have Prince Philip who fights a real fire-breathing dragon, so that's fun. I like to say that even though we're a princess show, we have stuff for the little boys. Well, shows continue tonight, Saturday, and Sunday at the Coliseum. Tickets start at $15. Today would have been Eudora Welty's 109th birthday. The world-renowned novelist and Pulitzer Prize winner was born in Jackson and spent years writing here at her family's home in Belhaven. That home still open for tours. Today, guides also served cake and lemonade to guests in honor of Welty's birthday. The house was fully restored by the State Department of Archives and History after her death in 2001. She won a Pulitzer for her novel, The Optimist Daughter, in 1973. She's got four collections of short stories and five novels. She was a prolific essay writer and book reviewer. So she was, she was a, just a treasure to this country, but especially to Mississippi. The guides give free tours at the Wealthy House on the 13th of every month as a way of continuously celebrating her birthday. Harsh words. President Donald Trump slamming James Comey as the former FBI director describes his interactions with the commander in chief in a scathing new book. 16 WABT's Aixa Diaz is in Washington. Megan, in his new book, James Comey paints President Trump as an ego driven mafia like figure who expects loyalty. The president calls Comey a weak and untruthful slime ball. Leaker and liar, President Trump blasts James Comey, tweeting it was his great honor to fire the former FBI director. The attack comes days before Comey's memoir, A Higher Loyalty, is released. This is nothing more than a poorly executed PR stunt by Comey. In an exclusive interview with ABC News, Comey recounts his first meetings with President Trump in January 2017. Comey says they discussed an unverified dossier that alleges Trump had an encounter with prostitutes at a hotel in Russia in 2013. He says he may want me to investigate it to prove that it didn't happen. And then he says uh, something that distracted me because he said, you know, if there's even a 1% chance my wife thinks that's true, that's terrible. The Republican National Committee pushing back, launching a website designed to discredit Comey. There are lots of questions about Comey himself and, and you know, how he handled the Clinton email investigation and whether Comey himself is something of a show horse. But on the other hand, uh, we know that he's probably a more truthful person than the president is. Meanwhile, after last month's firing of Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe, a new Inspector General report finds McCabe misled investigators about alleged leaks to the media in 2016. Sounds like two peas in the pod with uh, McCabe and Comey. McCabe was fired in disgrace for misconduct and lying about it. McCabe, who was fired two days before his retirement, denies any wrongdoing and says he was singled out because of his support for Comey. In Washington, Ike Zadia, 16 WAPT News. James Comey's firing in May of 2017 led to the appointment of special counsel Robert Mueller in the Russia Pro. A group that works to build water wells in Africa is holding a fundraising gala tonight. Grace Water is based in Yazoo City. Every year, the team goes to Africa to build wells. The event begins at 6.30 tonight at the Mississippi Agriculture and Forestry Museum. We have mainly done most of our work in the country of Zimbabwe. Um, it's just uh, a place.
place that has high poverty rates and lots of needs um, there, and it's uh, they have a water crisis in that country where a lot of people spend um, a large percentage of their time every day just hauling water. Organizers with Grace Water say the average well cost is around $8,000. The Race for the Cure is happening tomorrow morning. This year's event being held at the Renaissance in Ridgeland. The Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure raises money and awareness, of course, about breast cancer. This year's honorary race chair is Molly May, who's actually Mississippi's youngest double mastectomy patient. She says the best thing about the Race for the Cure is that all of the money that's donated stays right here in Mississippi for cancer research. But in this case with Susan G. Komen in the Memphis Mid-South area chapter, it is benefiting your state. So you know that you're doing good for literally someone who may be living down your road. You can hear Molly's story and her journey with breast cancer coming up tonight at 6. 16 WABT, a proud sponsor of the race for the third year. We have a team running tomorrow morning, and I'll be out there helping MC all of the fun. Turning now to the weather. So with all of that going on this weekend, we've been watching this weather situation. Well, constantly. we've talked about I think there's going to be a little bit of a window early in the morning. Yeah. Little one. It's going to be close. Okay. It's going to be close. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think the rough weather will affect the race. Maybe a Good. shower, but... All in all, not too bad. Clouds coming in right now, but the conditions are not favorable for storm development this evening here in central Mississippi. I'll let you know when that changes and what areas I'm most concerned about. Opening statements in the David Copperfield trial. Why the famous musician is being sued by an audience member. Plus, the mystery Mega Millions winner reveals what this new multimillionaire plans to do with his new fortune. You're watching WAPT News. The one to watch. All right, live storm show 16 Doppler radar. We got storms lighting up off to our west. Tornado watches from Shreveport up to Little Rock. And this is one of those dangerous situation tornado watches. Look at the storms just firing up here in central sections of uh, Louisiana up into Arkansas. They are moving 
from south to north, and that's the favored direction of storm development through the course of this evening. So that is good news. Look how widespread this storm is. These are all blizzard warnings and winter storm warnings on the cold side of it. And then on the spring side, this is a typical powerful spring storm system. The storms are beginning to fire up. So we'll watch the situation uh, late tonight. Well after midnight, some storms could be affecting the Delta counties. Watch for that. But as far as the Channel 16 view and area, pretty much looks like the morning time and all of the timing coming up. Here's a live look outside. We do have some cloud cover right now. Actually, have a little bit of a warm layer of air over us, so that is not favorable for the clouds to build up this evening. 83, 58, very pleasant early this morning, but it got pretty warm with those winds. 83 the high. Sunrise tomorrow morning at 6.32. So we stand at 79 degrees right now. Winds brisk out of the south at 14, and overnight tonight we'll see some wind gusts up to 30 miles per hour. Rough Saturday, not the entire day where you live or are, but a portion of it will be stormy. Here's our weather system coming together, you know, from a atmospheric perspective. This is just kind of like one of the wonders of nature. The warm spring air on this side up here, the cold, the storm is twisting, everything coming together right now for this storm system to develop through the course of the overnight hours into tomorrow. So here in the Arklatex, rough for tonight. There's going to be more tornadoes there. The front crosses the area pretty quickly in the afternoon, so the severe weather threat will shift off to our east, followed by colder weather for Sunday. All right, here are the specifics. The red areas where there could be some strong tornadoes tonight, Arklatex region, and as all this evolves, thunderstorms will build a little bit to the east across Arkansas and Louisiana. And after midnight and in towards dawn, there's a chance that uh, some of those stronger storms could move into our Mississippi River counties. They will weaken into the early morn hour, morning hours, but re-strengthen mid to late morning and then shift to the east. And by the time this line gets into the eastern parts of the state during the afternoon time, again, this will be an area where there could be strong tornadoes. So we'll be watching that very closely to see how that uh, develops. But early morning here in the immediate Jackson area, there could be a brief dry window. Watch the storms well to our west just after midnight. And here we are at 8 a.m. Outside of a shower, the weakening line of storms just coming up on our Mississippi River counties. Look how it intensifies with the heat of the day. And it's that afternoon time where it could get really rough. And then we clear out and it turns much colder. Rainfall amounts, uh, I'm forecasting two to four five and there you can see the computer spitting out widespread heavy rainfall so 70 or low and the threat of some storms uh, way late tonight and towards dawn in the western parts of the area spreading across the area during the day 75 turning colder 42 tomorrow night lost in the scuffle is the threat of a frost and a light freeze across parts of the area monday morning before temperatures rebound next week. Of course, we're watching the storms mm -hmm. to our west closely. Yeah. Uh, update at 6, and of course, on my Twitter, dhartman underscore WAPT. Good time to follow if folks haven't sure done is. that already. All right, David, thank you. An unprecedented number of women are running for political office. They're getting their names on ballots in local, state, and federal elections. Many of them first-time candidates. This weekend, on Matter of Fact, Soledad O'Brien looks at recruitment efforts for both parties. This week on Matter of Fact, a record number of women are running for Congress this year. For Democrats, many say they're motivated in part by President Donald Trump. But Republicans are also reaching out to recruit more women. How do presidential politics impact their campaign strategies? Each woman is going to run her own race. She's not forced to do one thing or another. And a conversation with the mayor of Flint, Michigan, four years after her town was hit with a water contamination crisis. Does she now believe the state when it says the water's safe to drink? And we'll show you a harp. It's not for music. It's helping people get access to drinking water. Those stories and much more this week on Matter of Fact. You can watch Matter of Fact with Soledad O'Brien Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on 16 WAPT. We'll be right back.
World's famous magician David Copperfield in court today facing a lawsuit from a former audience member. That man claims he was badly injured when one of Copperfield's tricks did not go as planned. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is following the latest. He's known for baffling audiences with his magic tricks and grand illusions. Thank you so much for spending this evening with us. But the secret behind one of David Copperfield's acts now revealed. Curtains are dropped. The participants who are in the platform are removed from the platform. As his legal team defends him in court. Mr. Copperfield is talking to the audience and the participants. Copperfield on trial being sued by a former audience member. Gavin Cox in tears in the courtroom as his attorney described how he claims Cox was injured during one of Copperfield's 2013 shows in Las Vegas. Cox says he was a part of this illusion called the vanishing crowd, during which 13 people seemingly disappear from a suspended cage and reappear at the back of the audience. But instead of magic, his attorney describes chaos. The crowd rushed off the stage into a dark construction zone where he says Cox fell and suffered permanent brain damage. He's not angry. He's injured. Cox suing the MGM Grand Hotel, the construction crew he says is linked to the incident, and Copperfield. But his attorney says they are not to blame. Mr. Cox simply missed his step. And a spokesperson for Copperfield tells ABC News this illusion has been performed successfully for more than 15 years with over 100,000 audience participants, adding the history of the show speaks for itself. Copperfield is expected to testify next week. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. Copperfield has been performing in Las Vegas for more than a decade. Well, the mystery winner of the $533 million Mega Millions jackpot has been revealed. It is now my pleasure to introduce the winner from Vernon, New Jersey, Mr. Richard Wall. Richard? 47-year-old Richard Wall stepped forward at New Jersey Lottery Headquarters in Trenton today. He lives in New Jersey and bought the winning ticket at a gas station. He said he's only played the Mega Millions twice in his life. He decided to buy the tickets and a soft drink at that gas station with $22 he had left in his wallet. Okay. For us, we believe God has a plan. So for us, the plan is to do a lot of good things with it. Um, we'll be working with our financial team to make sure those things happen. Um, it's not only life-changing money for me, but I want it to be life-changing money for others, family, friends, um, people in need. Good guy. Wall works as a production manager for a food service company. He says he's not going to quit right away. He plans to stay on at his job, help with the transition for a bit, and then he'll officially retire. As we head to break, here's a look at stocks. You're watching 16 WAPT News, the one to watch.